Hello everybody. Um, today we are going to talk about individual images uh, during coronary angiogram. Uh, so far we have gone through the basics of the angiographic views. Then we took it to the next level, trying to get different pictures while moving the the II or image intensifier. Now in this short clips. I will individually go on on the views, individual views, and then then we will try to dissect out things that you need to remember while you are trying to think, put things together and uh, recognize each image and where all the structures are like. So with that, we come to the picture one here, as we previously described. So if this is a patient lying on the table, you have an x-ray source in the RAO caudal position. And that's how you get your LAO caudal view again. Just to refresh the memory, the image is labeled by the image intensifier. So wherever the image intensifier is, that counts your image not the x-ray source but it is important to know where the x-ray source is and that's when things will start you know uh, come together and you will get an idea of what structures you are seeing so with that on your left there is a cine image um, of a LAO caudal view it is also known as a spider view just as the coronary arteries look like the the legs of the spider so in layman term we sometimes call it a spider view one thing you all have to know is as we talked about there are rao views and lao views in lao views your catheter if the patient is getting angiogram through the through the femoral axis the catheter will be open the way i remember that is if you take the l of this lao view l so l is open so if you see this catheter here this is a jetkin catheter jl catheter and you can see that it is all opened up while when we were looking at the rao views ra is called retracted so these are the retracted views in a view that the catheters will be folded on themselves. So it might look something like that. So whereas in the LAO views, the catheters will be open up. So if you see an image where you see the catheter, which is nicely opened up, like in this picture, it's most probably an LAO view. So you see the catheter coming down from below the diaphragm so that kind of tells you it's a femoral axis or if you don't see this catheter then most probably the catheter might be coming from the radial axis either the left or the right so so far this was for for the catheter now we move on to the, the individual coronary arteries in previous talk we talked about that this view is very good for looking at the left main so if you look at here you can see the left main very clearly and you can see in the cine loop on the left that you can nicely see the left main even the ostium of the left main where you can see the the dye which is going back into the aortic cusp but the most important thing is the bifurcation so you can see how nicely the led the left circumflex you can see their origin their ostium and this is the view where you can see if the patient has got a ramus or a no ramus intermediate so if this artery arises just at this fork here as in this case this is a ramus and if it is slightly lower then it will it will not be called ramus then it will be called an om brand sometimes some people might call this ramus intermediate as a very high om 
if they have any hard time recognizing if it is truly coming from this fork here but in this example what I angiogram I'm showing you can clearly see that there is an artery coming right at that that fork um, so that constitutes the ramus the LED as we talked in the previous images it will be going up and away from you and then it will be foreshortened and then coming down the diagonal branches you can see the ostium of the diagonal branches here as well and they will be probably going towards one o'clock or two o'clock position and then the LED will be kind of looping around and then coming down as you see in this picture and again as we talked about the caudal views are good for the left circumflex that is the artery that will be mainly in the screen nicely opened up so here you see that left circumflex and then the branches that the left circumflex will give let's say in this example OM1 and then OM2 so now we we recognized the arteries where their anatomical location is and how do you see their ostium which is very clear in this picture so as we talked about this LAO caudal view is very good for the bifurcation and the left main and the, the proximal portion of either the left circumflex ramus intermedius LED or even seeing the proximal portion of the diagonal branches so if you see on the left image you can see the heart shadow as well I just here I kind of dotted it in this picture here these are the borders for the heart and you can see that it's kind of rounded in shape just because as we talk about in the caudal views the heart is not opened up and as we will move along in the other images you will see a very nice boot shaped heart in the other images I want you to look at the the angiogram on the left and try to appreciate the spine so here I have drawn the spine in the with a yellow color here so now going back as we talked about in the LAO caudal view the x-ray source is coming from the right so it's coming from the right and going down and here is the spine of the patient and then the image intensifier picks up these x-ray radiations and then you see an image so basically if you get this picture in your mind you will see that in the cine image you see the spine to be on the right side this is because the image intensifier is on the right side but the x-ray is coming from the RAO caudal views it comes from the body and 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 through the chest and then it comes across the spine and then when we will talk about the opposite image of the LAO caudal view like RAO caudal view the spine will be shifted towards the left another important thing I want you to look at in the cine image on the left and here I have kind of made it in the, the right lower quadrant is your diaphragm you can see a little bit of diaphragm coming up underneath the heart but again as we talked about in our previous talk the x-ray image is coming from the top it's not going to transfer the diaphragm it's going to transfer the the heart first and then the diaphragm so you might not see a whole lot of the diaphragm in the caudal views but in the cranial views when the x-ray will be in the caudal position and the image intensifier is in the cranial position the beam the x-ray beam that will come from below the patient will transfer the diaphragm first and then the heart and you might see a diaphragm something like that and again as i said we will come to that when we will be talking about the other views so this was kind of an opening 
um, in an introductory talk about some of the basic angiograph angiographic views that we will be talking about consolidating on the previously discussed topics. I hope this was helpful. Um, we'll, I'll come up with the next view that will probably be the RAO caudal view and once we will go over all the views things will I hope will um, start to make more sense and the more and more angiographic film that you will see that will make you more perfect. Let me know your feedback if you like these videos especially the angiographic views and anything you want to add to that. Have a very good day. Thank you.